simply a surface uh, image. This is something that is very difficult for the scientists to explain. The uh, scientists took over very high power microscopes. Here we see one of them studying the uh, cloth through the microscope. And they also use the uh, microscope to take photographs. You have some high power uh, microscopic slides uh, showing the texture of the uh, cloth and uh, the uh, very faint image on the surface of the uh, threads and the blood stains which uh, penetrate into the uh, uh, cloth. So uh, they uh, have a series of uh, both the image areas and the blank areas and the various stains on the cloth. Uh, this is the x-ray team, Bill Modern and his assistants. They x-rayed the entire cloth uh, to uh, make sure what was uh, on the cloth or underneath the cloth. As I mentioned, the nuns after the fire made a, put on a backing cloth. Uh, the uh, x-ray men uh, developed the uh, x-ray plates in a temporary uh, lab there to make sure that all of them were good. And then they brought all the, the x-rays back to America and uh, they studied, uh, studied them in detail uh, during the uh, next couple years. The table was uh, made uh, with 18, uh, by 8 in 18-inch panels. Uh, each panel could be removed, for example, to get the metal out of the way for the x-rays. And also, they were able to remove all of the uh, panels and to take a photograph of the entire shroud with light behind it. Uh, this was very important because it was the first time they could see in detail what was underneath the patches, how much charred material there was and so on. Also, very Im important, the image does not appear at all, which uh, was contrary to the idea of the fact that the image was painted. Uh, it would show uh, up on the uh, uh, picture like this. The blood stains, however, are visible and also the water stains which date back to the time of the uh, fire. So this was a very important uh, photograph for their uh, studies. They were able to go back and to check many things uh, by means of this uh, photograph with the light coming through. Here is uh, Joe Aceta. He uh, was uh, in charge of the uh, infrared photography. They took all kinds of photographs. I've heard of some place between uh, 35 and 40,000 photographs altogether. Uh, each uh, type of photograph reveals something. Here is an example when they were taking the uh, infrared uh, photographs. They also took ultraviolet and I say many other uh, types of uh, very specialized technical uh, photographs which were useful in the uh, scientific uh, studies. They were also able to unstitch the one end of the shroud from the uh, backing cloth and to view the reverse side. Eric Jumper is looking there, and John Jackson's looking over his shoulder. Uh, the water, the uh, body image is not visible on the reverse side. That is strictly an image, a surface image, uh, whereas the blood stains and the water stains are visible, as would be expected, on the underneath uh, side. <clears throat> so it was the first time they had an opportunity to look at the reverse uh, side since the... Uh, uh, backing cloth had been uh, added. Here we have two of the scientists checking the uh, spectra of the uh, body image and the uh, scorch marks. In 1973, when there was a, uh, a small private uh, investigation and a, a TV program, uh, Dr. Willis, an Englishman, uh, pointed out the similarity between the light scorch mark and the body image. And uh, he said, we know what caused the scorch. Perhaps it was uh, some kind of heat uh, that caused the body image. So uh, in 78, when the scientists went over, they uh, decided to uh, take the uh, spectrum of the two uh, stains, the body image and the light uh, scorch mark. And remarkably, they came out very similar. Uh, the first uh, uh, conclusion was that uh, this is probably the explanation for the image. but. When the report was circulated to the other groups in the, uh, the scientific, uh, the scientists checking the uh, spectra of the uh, body image and the uh, scorch marks. In 1973, when there was a, uh, a small private uh, investigation and a, a TV program, uh, Dr. Willis, an Englishman, uh, pointed out the similarity between the light scorch mark and the body image. 
and uh, he said, we know what caused the scorch. Perhaps it was uh, some kind of heat uh, that caused the body image. So uh, in 78, when the scientists went over, they uh, decided to uh, take the uh, spectrum of the two uh, stains, the body image and the light uh, scorch mark, and remarkably, they came out very similar. Uh, the first uh, uh, conclusion was that uh, this is probably the explanation for the image, but when the report was circulated to the other groups in the, uh, the scientific uh, body, the photographers pointed out that although the uh, scorch marks uh, fluoresce in ultraviolet light, the body image does not, and therefore the two images are not exactly the same. And uh, since then, they've tested with various kinds of heat and um, various kinds of uh, rays. Uh, they have not been, the scientists have not been able to explain or reproduce an image similar to the uh, body stain on the uh, Shroud of Turin. It is as much a mystery today as it was in 78. Here are the two uh, scientists copying down all the data on the spectra. They brought it uh, back and I say uh, used it for detailed studies because the scientists are very interested in the cause. This is Rudy Dichtel, the genius who kept all the equipment working. Uh, very difficult because the uh, electrical current is different in Europe and at times a little unsteady. But uh, they were scientists were able to do all the tests except one, one uh, because one piece of equipment was not uh, operating uh, properly. So we owe a lot to him for his help in uh, making the uh, testing program a success in 1978. So this is the image of the man on the uh, shroud. Uh, the indications are that, uh, no, it is actually uh, an image of a human body. Uh, just how it uh, got there, how it was made, this is what the uh, scientists are uh, very much interested in uh, discovering. However, the indications are that it is really a very ancient piece of uh, linen and uh, therefore that uh, the uh, idea that it uh, could be uh, uh, maybe even 2,000 years old is uh, quite uh, possible. This is a photograph now of the entire image, the entire cloth again, which shows us the image on the right, the back, and on the left you have the image of the front of the uh, body. The, uh, here's the back and the legs and the feet, and then the uh, cloth folded in the middle and the other half picking up the image of the face, the chest, the arms, and the legs, and the blood stain down by the feet. So uh, this is the image which has created so much interest among the scientists uh, how to explain this uh, negative image on a piece of cloth that is certainly uh, 400 years old and the indications are that it might well be 2,000 years old. Here you can also see how faint the image is. The black and white photographs, while it gives us more detail, uh, is a bit misleading. Now we can look at a few of the details on the image. This is the image of the back of the body. The circle there marks the head area in the back. The uh, area is marked by numerous blood stains, which indicate that uh, some kind of sharp points, the doctors tell us, uh, made uh, many uh, no wounds in the head area, which uh, bled out into the hair and uh, caused the uh, small individual uh, blood stains. So this man was, in some, his head was pierced by many uh, points in the head area. Uh, we know that Christ was crowned with thorns. This was a very unusual circumstance in the case of Christ. And uh, if this is the image of Christ, the indication is that the crown of thorns was much larger than uh, is ordinarily represented in uh, medieval art. Uh, this slide shows us the uh, area of the uh, chest area and the arms, the wound in the side and the front of the body on the right-hand side. It is uh, the wound in the wrist is very much in agreement with uh, uh, anatomy and uh, physiology. physiology. The wound in the side here, it's on the right-hand side. Uh, remember the cloth was 
uh, covered the body here, so don't be misled by right and left. The wound is between the fourth and fifth uh, rib. It's about uh, two, a little over two inches uh, uh, long. Uh, there is a flow of blood and serum from that wound in the side. A very unusual representation of blood. Uh, you do not ordinarily have the uh, heavy, darker elements of the blood and the clear serum. And yet again, another detail that is visible or uh, uh, in accord with modern uh, anatomy and physiology, uh, something that was really discovered only after uh, the invention of the microscope. So again, something which is very much in accord with uh, modern science and uh, far in advance of the Middle Age uh, knowledge. This is the back of the body. Here you have the blood which flowed across the back image after the body was laid horizontal. You have the marks of bruises all over the back, then almost innumerable bruises. By studying these marks, they are able to reconstruct the object that would make a mark like that. It was uh, a leather thong with uh, either two metal balls on or like a little dumbbell attached to a uh, leather strap. Uh, this is a description of the flagrum, a uh, Roman scourge. They uh, can figure out the angle of the, uh, the uh, blows, and uh, they came from two sides, and uh, I say are almost innumerable, inflicting a very severe beating or flogging on the person who was uh, scourged. The image of the feet. Here we have the, uh, the back of the uh, feet, the almost a complete imprint of that foot and a partial imprint of this one. Uh, the one foot... Uh, apparently a wound uh, there in the center of that foot, the right foot, a uh, flow of blood when the body was laid horizontal after it was taken down from the cross, and uh, this foot is uh, turned in towards center a little bit higher. Apparently uh, the two feet were superimposed and a single nail went through the two feet. This is the face of the man, the man of the shroud. <coughs> Who was the man of the shroud? The identification is a case of circumstantial evidence. Many of the circumstances of Christ's crucifixion were very unique. The crowning with thorns, the piercing of the side. Uh, they did not break his legs, although they broke the legs of the other two men who were crucified with him. So that uh, we can line up a, a, a number of very unusual circumstances of Christ's crucifixion which uh, match up with the image that we have here of the man of the shroud who apparently suffered the wounds very similar to those which are described in the gospel. It's unique that if Christ decided to leave us as an image of himself, the image that he left us is one with all the bruises and bloodstains of his passion, as if he wanted to remind us of the terrible price that he paid for our salvation. And we cannot study the image on the shroud without obtaining a deeper knowledge of the sufferings of Christ and a greater appreciation for the love that motivated him to suffer for us.